This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Frank, after the news on Friday night that you guys have won the bids for Tyson Fury against Dillian White, I'm assuming you've had worse weekends. Uh, did you celebrate at all? Yeah, we had uh, we had uh, a few drinks in the office afterwards and uh, that was it. And the weekend was fairly quiet. I went to see uh, one of my grandsons play football, the usual sort of stuff, and... Yesterday, did nothing. There was no football. No, there was football. There was the African nations football, but there was no uh, premiership, so uh, it's a little bit dull. But anyway, other than that, nice weekend restful, and we're back in the swing today, making our preparations uh, for the big fight. Have you spoken to Tyson at all since the news came out? And if so, what was his reaction? Well, I spoke to him immediately within a minute of the uh, bid, of, you know, our bid being... Well, once they opened up Matchroom's bid, we knew we won, won it, so I just called him and said we're all on, and he was highly delighted. He's been sort of... Was, you know, he's not... Was he fought, had one fight in nearly two years, and he just wants to get into the ring, so he was highly delighted with the fact that we, you know, our team won, and uh, he's looking forward to the fight. Now, on the bids itself, were you expecting their bid to be high, not higher than yours, but higher than it was? Um, I don't know. I, 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 what I was concerned with, some left field thing came in, you know, some lunatic came in and bid something stupid. Like or something like that. Well, there was a few names floating around of people who were, gonna, who were trying to put bids in. You knew that they were, you know, they were not, you know, they would not be able to deliver, and that would delay things. Uh, thankfully, that didn't happen. And um, we had a conversation about half an hour before. The bit, the bids. We're still, still, you know, trying to negotiate. Half hour before that, and we was talking to um, uh, what's his name, Ben Shalom, and uh, Dillian White's uh, lawyer, um, Jeff Bentz, speaking to both of them, and they were trying to put something together, but it didn't work out, and it was a little bit too late by then. So we said we're going ahead with our bid and did what we had to do, which is good for Dillian White. I mean, he's, he's a, he gets a touch out of this, doesn't he? It's a big. I mean, the facts. You know, we won the purse, but it means that the worst case, he gets $2 million more than Matchroom would put in. And there's been some speculation that Matchroom, Eddie Hearn specifically, talked up his bid quite a lot to push you guys to bid even more. It, it, do you think there's any truth in that, or is that just kind of face-saving type stuff? you got reading into it how you like. You know, we had we already determined how much we were going to bid for the fight, so it's irrelevant. Um, you know, I, I don't think he, he ever felt, felt that he could win it. You know, it's a funny thing when it comes to these real big ones, we're normally successful. Now, the WBC have said there's 10% of the total purse being taken aside as a winner's bonus, if you like, um, which they've done in previous times, and then 80-20 for the rest in favour of Tyson, as you um, negotiated for. But Dillian White's still in arbitration with the WBC. Could that still change the purse splits? Not from our perspective, definitely not. I don't even know what their case is about, to be quite honest, and that's their case. It's nothing to do with us, and we submitted our bid based upon uh, the 80-20 split, and that's what we, we that's what we've done, and that's what we did. And have you heard from the other side at all, either Dillian White's team or Matru, even though they're not officially involved? I know they were advising White at some point. Have you heard from anyone from that side? Yeah, well, from Dillian's side, is his lawyer, Jeff Bentz, and, uh, it, and it was Shalom. They were the people representing it, nothing to do with uh, Matru. No, but I mean, since the bids, have you spoken to them? You know, is, is White happy, etc. I should think he should be over the moon. <laughs> he be, should, yeah, I mean, yeah. if, he, and if he fancies the job and wins the fight, he could be getting just under $12 million. It's a bit of a day at the races, isn't it? <laughs> eh? So why should he be unhappy? Um, I'm quite sure he's happy. And, and, and also, some, from his perspective, he's got something to aim for now. The same as Tyson. There'll be a the date to be announced next week and the venue, and we can move from there. And I'm hoping there's not going to be any problems and we're all going to work professionally together to make the event the success it should be. Well, as you kind of alluded to there, I'm sure you've seen there's been a bit of speculation about how much White will participate in selling the fight now that it's going to be you know, promoted by you guys on BT Sport. Would you foresee any issues, to, you know, turning up at a press conference with earphones on or not turning up at all? Well, as long as he turns up, I don't care what he's got on. Come naked for all I care. Um, it's just as long as he participates... And that's it. That's what we pay for. I mean, we, you know, we're not we're not asking him to do anything for nothing. That's what he, that's part of the job. That's what you get paid for. Of course, we want him to work, and I'm sure it's better for him. You know, at the end of the day, the more people who see him fight, the better it is for him. Why would why wouldn't he Why wouldn't he help? I mean, you know, I've been in, involved over the years where we've had 
sort of rivalries and, uh, you know, and we've been in those situations and we always, always um, work together to make it work because that's, what, that's, that's good for us, it's good for him and it's good for boxing and for the fans. Now, you talked about date and venue. It's not confirmed yet, but you must have kind of something in mind to have made the budget for your bid in the first place. What what kind of time are we looking at? And obviously in the UK, but outdoor, indoor? Of course I had something in mind when I bid for it and uh, you'll find out next week. Um, the bottom line of it all is it'll be sometime in April. And... There's been people that have talked about um, potential other deals coming up before the purse bids. It was extended a number of times. So presumably there was some interest on both sides about different options in terms of step asides and potentially a, an undisputed fight. I know that was what you were focusing on at one point. What was kind of the key deciding factor for that not happening in the end? Anthony Joshua asked him for an additional $5 million to step aside. And Tyson said enough is enough and that was the end of it. So, so that was the bottom line of it. So he was offered $15 million, that's what was reported, and then he asked for 20 is that what we're saying? I'm saying he asked for an extra five, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But you know what, it's all irrelevant. What is important now is what we're doing, and what we're doing right this moment is focusing on this fight and getting this fight on. This is reality, this is, this is where we are, this is what we, as I say, what we bid for, um, and it paves the way for a unification match for the winner. I don't know if they put a Joshua and uh, Usyk fight on the rematch. The winner of that fights the winner of our one. And it's a, that's a fantastic fight for everybody to look forward to. Now, you won the bids with a record-breaking amount um, for a title fight. People were not surprised that you won them, but surprised at how high the bids went on both sides. How do you now make it pay from a commercial perspective? You know, look, at, I haven't done my kind of back of a fag packet calculations. You've been doing this for decades. But how do you, how do you make it pay? How do you make the most of the event in terms of the profits? Well, we'll, we'll do that from ticket sales, from TV pay-per-view, um, TV sales around the world, sponsorship, all the ancillary rights that go with it, merchandising, all that's been taken into consideration. And that's how we determined how much we were going to bid for the fight. And we feel that it's going to be a bit, it is a big fight and we feel it's going to be a, a great success and, uh, and that reflects in the amount of money that the guys are earning and I believe that we'll make some money out of it too. And TV-wise, is it BT Sport Box Office exclusively here and uh, ESPN pay-per-view exclusively in the States? That's what it is, yeah. That's pretty good. ESPN pay-per-view in the States for, a, for an all-British world heavyweight title fight. Well, it's a big fight. And you've got to realise that, you know, Tyson's had his last how many fights in the States now, was it? Five. Five. He's had his last five fights there. So, yeah, so it's not like they don't know who he is. Um, he's, he's probably more popular out there than, you know, than, than any of the other. He certainly wasn't more than Deontay Wilder. And he's one of the top, top draws out there. So there'll be, they'll, they'll, there's a lot of interest in his fight. You know, it's the first time he's fought for nearly four years in the UK time this comes round. So, uh, again, there's going to be a lot of anticipation from, the, from uh, the fans here to see him in action. He's never defended his title in this country. So, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a really good event and I think it's going to be well received everywhere. You know, if Dillian does, you know, and also from Dillian's perspective, he, he's talked a good fight up to us now and you know he's a competitor and you know he comes to fight. So... I think you're going to get something exciting on the night. And anything can happen in heavyweight boxing. You know, I fancy Tyson big time, but anything can happen. One punch can change the dynamic of a fight. And he can punch. Um, and so can Tyson, by the way. So it's going to be an exciting fight, I think. Do you kind of still, at this stage of your career, get excited when you get a victory like this? Because it's not a fight of winning a title or anything like that, but it's winning a purse bid for a fight and everyone was talking it up, who's going to win the bids, kind of seems like a statement. Well, it was. We knew he was going to win the bid. I mean, that, that's how we, you know, was very emphatic that we were going to win this purse bid. And we worked hard to make it happen, and that's what, what did happen. Um, and, yeah, it's, of course it's exciting. I mean, the boxing business, I've been doing this for a long, long time, and, uh, you know, we sat down and worked our numbers out. We worked out what they could contribute from the States with Bob Arum, and that's how we, we, we justified our bid. And, obviously... 
the uh, only other bidder was Matram, and obviously they're involved with the zone, and they've looked at their numbers in the states and the UK, and they put a bid in what they what they felt that they could afford. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 going to be a, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good lead up to it, and uh, and I think there's going to be <laughs> I think there's be, probably be a few bumps in the road on the way, <laughs> but as long as we get it over the line. As long as um, we get, you know, on the date we announce, as long as that fight takes place, then everybody's going to be happy. And it's also that massive carrot of the unification bout. You know, the winner will definitely fight for unification. So it's exciting times for the heavyweight division. And Britain has three parts of that pie. So three, three, three portions of that are Brits. And we've got Usyk being the other one. So who knows? It might. I'd prefer it to be an all British um, mm. final at the end, but we'll see what happens. Now you're Tyson's exclusive UK promoter. We, we, so get it right. Bob Arum is Tyson's American promoter. We are his exclusive promoters in the rest of the world. That's why the US. Yeah. Apologies. Um, so, but kind of leads to the question: How involved, if at all, will Bob be in the promotion of this fight? He'll be involved in it. You know, of course he'll be involved in it. He'll come over for it. And then I, and I want him to come over for the press conference, you know. Um, he's he's worked with us. We work together. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that Bob's involved. I mean, these he, two old gits working there, Statter and Hilton, we'll be, we'll be flying, you know. That's where we'll be, mate. He's got a few years on you, Frank, to be fair, but... Well, he, he has. I'd say he, he, gets, he, does it, he gets around more than I do, though, that's for sure. I'd like his air miles. I think he has some uh, chemical assistance in that regard, but what are I supposed to relax you, isn't it? I don't know. Well, why am I not doing that? that? That's the headline there. Frank Warren asked for weed <laughs> during the interview. Oh, I asked to go weed. I can't, my age, I can't hold it anymore. Um, will there be any kind of top ranked talent, US talent, on the undercard you foresee? Yeah, we haven't worked out the un undercard yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he's uh, heavyweight. Who's going to come over and spar with Tyson? He may probably be on the Jerry and Anderson. Yeah, so Brits to get a chance to look at him, and I think he'll work out with Tyson on the on the preparation. And what else can we expect to see from the undercard from a UK perspective? Who who are you kind of hand handpicked? Uh, we haven't even got got round to that yet. I mean, the main the thing is to get the main event, and the main event sells the whole thing. Mm. And the undercard on this show is is great for the fighters who'll be on there. But this is all about the main event. And does that mean we shouldn't expect kind of too many star names on the undercard? Because as you said, yeah, the main event sells the show. Decided. I mean, our star names are all going to be busy in the next uh, next couple of months. You know, Daniel Dubois, I expect the WBA to announce today or tomorrow that uh, Bryant has to defend against him. So he's going to be fighting for that WBA title, which should give him then the mandatory position if he beats Bryant. Um, we've obviously got um, uh, Zach Parker, that WBO announced that he's got to have an interim fight against Andrade, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, Big Joe Joyce, he'll be back in action. Unfortunately, he broke his wrist; would have been out before, so he's going to be out late April, early May. So we've got some we've got some good good things happening, and uh, and they're, but they're all separate fights in their own right. They won't be on on that show. Just going back to the heavyweights for a minute, you talked about kind of a final to. F uh, via for the undisputed crown eventually. Who do you expect to be on the other side of the final from Tyson? Who do you expect to come out on top if the rematch happens between Joshua and Usyk? Based off of what I see in the last fight, I fancy Usyk. Um, I, you know, he's he's a trainer at the end, or he said through the interpreter, his trainer told him not to try and, you know, not to expose himself, just outbox him. Well, he nearly stopped him by outboxing him. He was gone in the last round. And I would think that he's going to get more out of it than uh, than uh, AJ is. And AJ's got a, you know, he didn't use his physical attribute, attributes last time. He allowed the smaller guys to get in, get underneath his jab. I mean, he, and he was beating him on the outside. And he, you know, which you think the bigger guy would be out jabbing him, but he didn't. And the thing is, Usyk now he's got a bit more time to be settled in at the heavyweight division. So he's going to feel pretty confident. He feel, I'm sure he feels he's got AJ's number. AJ's obviously very dangerous. Can he outbox him? I don't think so. I mean, I looked at him. When have I looked at him where he's actually gone out and boxed someone? Probably when he had the rematch with um, uh, Andy Ruiz, and Re Randy Andy Ru Ruiz came in like he like he'd been, as I say, training in a sausage factory. <laughs> he was huge. He was heavy, but he but he he fought on the back foot with Ruiz. I don't think he can do that with um, 
with Usyk because I think the difference between Ruiz and Usyk, Usyk is a tr true professional. He ain't going to come in overweight. He's not going to be taking anything for granted. And if Joshua goes on the back foot against Usyk, then you've got to fancy Usyk, you know, you've got to give him, you know, fancy him quite big. I would anyway because Joshua's, Joshua's, Josh, what he has to do, Joshua, to beat him is impose himself, which he didn't do in the first fight, using his physical attributes, his jab, his size, his power, and he didn't do that. And he didn't do that. And uh, can he do it next time? That's going to be the interesting thing. Can he do it? And is he going to have a new trainer? I don't know what he's going to do. Um, based upon the last fight, he needs a new trainer. Now, let's talk about some of the other fighters you mentioned. Daniel Dubois, um, soon hopefully to be made mandatory for the WBA uh, regular belt against Trevor Bryan. They've had a bit of back and forth uh, last night and this morning on social media. How do you kind of see that fight panning out? And ultimately, do you see Daniel and Tyson Fury on a collision course? Well, look, the thing is with uh, Daniel, it, it, you know, we want to keep him busy, but we've had to sort of stop now because he's in that spot, that number one spot. So giving him a fight in between... He was going to fight in America, but he didn't fight there for, for uh, anyway, I won't go into the reason he didn't fight there. But now he's in a position where we can't be putting fights in between, otherwise he's going to lose that mandatory slot. All that matters is to fight against Bryant. And how do I expect it to end? I, I fancy him. I won't put him in otherwise. I fancy he's, I fancy he's got the beast in a Bryant. Um, and if he does that, he's the official number one. And if all these things that we've talked about happen, there's a unification fight, then whoever comes out as a unified champion has got to make a decision who he's going to defend against because he'll be called, called to defend those four belts, who he's going to defend against, which includes also, by the way, Joe Joyce mm -hmm. as the uh, WBO mandatory. So they're going to have to make some choices. Now, will the, will the guy who's got all the belts... The eventual winner, will he hold on to them? Will he vacate some of them? Whatever happens, they're in good, both of them are in good positions. Daniel's in a good position and so is Joe. So from our, from Queensbury perspective, we're, we're, you know, we've got our guys and manoeuvred our guys and worked very hard to get them where they're at now. They've now got to go and do the business. And you can think of all those great fights that can come as a result of that. You know, maybe Daniel does fight Tyson. Maybe Joe fights Tyson. Maybe they fight each other. Maybe they fight other guys. But whatever happens, there's a group of fights there that can be made. And even if, and I don't think Tyson, I think Tyson will come out on top, but even if the others come out top, they've got to fight one of those guys. But I just feel that Tyson, in my opinion, he's, I mean, he's head and shoulders bubble, the heavyweights at the moment. He's uh, the number one in the world. Uh, and I think he's the number one heavyweight of his generation. I really do believe that. So um, whatever happens... They're all in a good position. And whatever happens, the fans are going to get some great fights. You mentioned Joe Joyce there, the WBO mandatory. When can we expect to see him back in action? Well, he, broke, he had a broken wrist. He broke his wrist. So we've waited for that to heal. I understand he can start punching sometime this month. Um, hopefully, you know, it heals and he doesn't get any problems. And uh, based upon that, it'll be out late April, early May. Anthony Yard... Will he fight for the WBO title in his next fight? Is that likely or will he have one in between? Well, that's what we want to happen. But at the moment, um, Joe Smith uh, and his team are looking for this unification fight. If they get the unification fight on, then the winner will have to defend against um, Anthony. If they can't get it on, and fingers crossed they can't, uh, then, they, then Joe Smith will have to have his mandatory against Anthony. And Zach Parker, big night coming up for him, I believe, soon in Derby. That was the plan anyway. But now he's been nominated for the WBO interim belt against Demetrius Andrade. What does that mean now? Does it go to purse bids? Do you still want it in Derby? What happens? Well, I want him to fight in Derby, but, but because of the announcement, we've got to sort of put the plans on hold. Um, we've got this week to negotiate with Matchroom, who represent Andrade, see if we can come to an arrangement. If we can't, it'll go to purse bids. Good stuff. Now, something I do want to ask you about, and I don't know how much you'll be able to say about this or how much we'll be able to use, but there's been loads and loads of speculation for a few months now that uh, the zone are closing in, apparently, on purchasing BT Sport. Um, 
most people around it are staying quite close-lipped. I guess it's more of a hypothetical question that if that does happen, how, if at all, would it affect you and, and your business? Well, it won't affect us at all. We have the exclusive right to promote boxing on BT. We also have the exclusive right for any pay-per-view boxing on BT. And that's, the, that's where it is. So even if these things were to move forward, they would have to discuss with us, but they can't do it, do any boxing on BT or whoever, B, if BT were to do a deal with someone without our consent. So hypothetically, you promote boxing on BT exclusively. Matchroom promote boxing exclusively on DAZN. DAZN and BT are owned by the same company, perhaps in the future. Does that make fights between the two camps easier to make? No, I don't think it, they're never easy to make. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't read too much into that. No, all it means is that we have the exclusive rights. No one else, no matchroom, no one else, just us.